Hey everyone, it's Dave here at Blue Bears Games again. Uh, today we're going to be doing the part two of the Perforos God of the Forge Commander Before and After. Uh, so anybody who hasn't seen the first part, go ahead and take a look at it and uh, this is the second part to that one. So the first one is before, this is the after. We're going to go ahead and show you the changes I made. Remember, the rules are I had to own it. So we're going to start with the uh, the things we took out. So obviously we didn't take out Perforos, but... We're going to go ahead and go over what we did take out. And some of these things you're going to be like, well, why would you do that? Uh, there is a reason. I'll show you in a minute. So, uh, we went ahead and took out a Molten Birth. Uh, the Fell Hide Spirit Binder. We took him out. I'm not really, I wasn't a big fan of him to begin with. Dragon Master Outcast. Sure, he's going to be useful for some things, but he was just too slow. He didn't really work as well. And the Goblin Rally we took out because it was five. Yeah, it was for four, but it was, I, I kind of tried to get the the actual total converter mana cost like curve down a little bit for this one just because I wanted to keep going and going and going and possibly get a couple of extras in it you know a couple extra spells in at a time uh, we did take out some of the uh, the Eldrazi spawn token creators uh, not all of them but some of them this one was just too much to cast it just you know I, I had an opportunity a couple times to play with it it didn't really perform as well as I was hoping the Hatcher, too expensive for what it does. Yeah, it's great for the 301s, but uh, unless you can copy it over and over and over again, it doesn't really help you much. Uh, Rapacious one, another another too high of a casting cost. Price of Progress, I told you guys I was probably going to take that out anyway. Don't panic, I didn't take Soul Ring out. I'll show you why. This is out in a minute. Uh, Soul Ring goes in just about every Commander deck. I did not technically take it out. I just did something special with the Soul Ring. Uh, same thing with the Ratchet Bomb. Artisan, I didn't really feel like keeping in there. He didn't fit really all that well into the theme of the deck. I told you guys I was going to take the Sizzle out before. Koth was actually a tough decision, and I actually, I'll actually i go over why I took him out, because the replacement was a huge upgrade, I would think. Warstorm Surge, I took out because, yeah, it's great, but they're all 1-1s, and I found a better option. Charmbreaker Devils didn't really fit the theme all that well. Uh, it, it was okay, but when I had him out, he underperformed. And I told you guys I was going to take the Phoenixes out, and I found better options. Uh, it was tough because I kind of wanted to keep them in as the creatures, but all the Phoenixes came out. And another tough decision was the Lightning Greaves. I figured that why take a spot up for this for my commander when my commander's already tough to kill. So... And then I went ahead and take it, took out all the mountains, and I'll show you why in a minute. I went ahead and took them all out, and I gave them a small upgrade. And I'm going to do one upgrade during the video that I found today, actually. Uh, and I took out the Necropolis. I told you I wasn't a fan of that one. It was too expensive for the cost for what it did, and the Gorge. Because they really didn't fit all that well. So that's the cards that I took out. And again, for anybody who doesn't know what I'm doing here, go see the first video. You'll see the original deck, and then we'll go from there. All right, so the upgrades <laughs> and the changes. I told you guys when I first did the, the video that there was an additional option for a 2 to cast to put 2 in. It was Dragon Fodder. I included that. That was a replacement. Instigator, again, it's 2 to cast for 2 creatures. So that was a natural. Uh, I took the Molten Birth out because I found in my stuff a foil one. I told you there's going to be upgrades as well. This is one of them. So I put a foil Molten Birth in to replace the actual regular Molten Birth. Uh, Force of Rage was another upgrade. It puts two three ones into play. And I can cast it as an instant. So that was definitely going in. When I opened that in my uh, Modern Horizons packs, I said that's got to go in. <coughs> Thatcher Revolt was an upgrade as well because it's three to cast to put three into play. And while they do, at the end of the turn, have to be sacrificed, we should, you know, when you play this, hopefully you have something to sacrifice them for a better, something better to do. Uh, Goblin Slide was, it was between this and Goblin Warns. Why not both? Because it's overkill. Uh, Goblin Warns I didn't put in over Goblin Slide for a reason. I have many instants and sorceries to play, Okay. This is good in the instance where I don't have any other creatures in play. So when I cast an instant of sorcery, sure, I'm going to be mostly be putting tokens into play, but not every instant of sorcery in the deck is going to be one that creates tokens. 
And Goblin Wardens requires you to sacrifice two already in play, and they have to be goblins, whereas not every single creature that's created in this deck is going to be a goblin. Yes, most of them are. Not all of them. And I was figuring, well, it's either Wardens or Goblin Slide. Goblin Slide got the nod just because it doesn't require something to already be in play. It requires you to play something with which this deck plays a ton of. So I chose Goblin Slide over Goblin Warns. Alright, Chandra, the Accolade of Flame. I mean, she's 3 to cast for 4 loyalty. Right there, that's good. And you'll notice that I put a couple of little extras in here. Her loyalty, uh, her her zero, her first zero ability, her, her quote-unquote uptick, because it's not really an uptick, but it is, is to put a loyalty counter on each red Planeswalker. I put a couple extras in to make that ability work a lot better. It does more for the deck than than just put the, the tokens in play, which is the next ability, which is to create two one ones. So she fit the theme of the deck very well. Um, when I saw her, I was like, she's got to go in. And then the last ability works very well too. So you can cast an instant or sorcery from the grave with converted mana cost three or less. Most of our stuff now costs three or less. Uh, I don't have very many things as far as instance, instance and sorceries that cost more than three. So her even her down tick ability is useful in this deck. She was not the replacement for Koth, but she was an upgrade in for other token generators. So uh, the next one I put in was Tabalt. The original Tabalt sucks. This one really good for this deck. So he does two things that really help out. So against life gain decks, he prevents all that crap happening where they just sit there and gain infinite life. And he creates tokens. Now remember, I also added the Chandra in to uptick him. He doesn't have his own uptick, so if you have both him and Chandra out, she upticks him to help out as well. So keep that in mind. And the last thing I added as far as my token generation changing <laughs> was I added a Yugen. Yugen, Yugen, whatever you want to call it. Um, he doesn't fit 100% of the theme of the deck, but he helps. So, there's not a lot of colorless spells in this deck, so his his static ability isn't really all that relevant, but it does help in some instances. Uh, I did it because he is actually good for technically drawing cards. I mean, quote-unquote drawing cards. He doesn't draw them, but he creates a 2-2, and if it, that 2-2 dies you get the card. So he exiles a card face down with a 2-2 creature basically holding that spell or a card. When that token dies, you get it, and you get to put it in your hand, so you can actually draw a mass amount of cards if a mass board wipe happens, and you've got, say, four or five 2-2s on the board that are this. It protects that spell or card because it goes under the creature, so it can't go anywhere but into your hand if it dies. And then the last thing was icing on the cake. I told you before I wasn't really happy with some of the, 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 the I guess, the defense that this deck has. His ability to destroy a permanent that's at least colored. So he's non-artifact, non-colorless destruction. So he fits the theme, you know, not entirely, but really well. He does multiple things that I needed. So that was what the token generation portion that I changed out and put in was. Uh, now I'm going to go into the acceleration. Um, this deck doesn't have a lot of it because it's monocolored and it has a lot of other things to help it. And I also lowered the converted mana cost of all the stuff. So I'm going to start with the Big Daddy. The reason I took the Soul Ring out was because I actually have Foil Soul Rings. I told you I was going to upgrade the decks too. <coughs> that was the biggest upgrade I made. So this one's nice and shiny. It's from the from the Vaults series. And I thought that was a nice little addition. Uh, another thing I added for some ramp, so to speak, was Thaumatic Compass. It searches for a basic land, and I've told you we have many basic lands in this deck. So it searches for them. And then it also flips after a while. So it turns from a man, like a land finder into a land itself that it kind of is, it's kind of like a Maze of Ith, if you've ever seen one. Maze of Ith just says that you can untap an attacking creature and remove it from combat. So it's there mostly for the to find lands for a little bit, and then eventually it turns into a maze of ith. So it's kind of helpful in the sense that you can make it so that somebody's creature doesn't attack you. So that was put in there. And the final piece of the additional 
mana ramping as I found was Pyromancer's Goggles. Yeah, it's 5 to cast, but at least it's, an ad it, it's mana rock. It adds a, a red to your mana pool. However, the addition to that is it also doubles the spell. So you add a red, and when that mana is spent to cast an instant or sorcery, copy it. So for all those instants and sorceries that we're casting that create tokens, if you have the, get the goggles out and you use it to cast it, you get double. So that was the, you know, the ramp, so to speak, portion that I added. The defense portion that I added. So I took out the original Ratchet Bomb only to put in a foil version. Again, another upgrade. <laughs> I didn't take the Ratchet Bomb out. I just upgraded it. And the, uh, the other big defense that I added was a Nebenril's Disc. And this one is a From the Vault's foil version. So it not only did it get an, up uh, you know, an update, it was an upgrade at the same time. So those are the two defense cards that I added in. Alright, for the utility... <laughs> <laughs> the utility is important because I mentioned that I had not remembered the name of a card in the first uh, first video. I remembered it and found it. So the first addition was to go on top of the Artifact Destruction. I found Vandal Blast. Really good card. It literally just... I told you before I have no... Like, Eugen doesn't take care of colorless or artifacts. This takes care of at least the artifacts or at least it helps. So basically blow up everybody but yours. The card that I couldn't remember the damn name of, Impact Tremors. So whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals one damage to each opponent. That was the replacement for the card that when they come into play, deal damage equal to their power. Because most of the things you're putting in deal, you know, have a power of one. It's cheaper to cast. You know what I mean? So I, I went with Impact Tremors as my replacement. I wish I had a foil one of those. I love that card. Uh, another utility card was Leyline of Punishment. It's half of Tabalt. Where, you know, damage can't be prevented and players can't gain life. Uh, in your opening hand, it's free. Other than that, it's for the cast. It's just, it helps against all those decks that can gain life to the point where it puts you out of range of being able to kill your opponent. <laughs> Another card that I put in it was Utility, and it was actually, actually here to help you with mana ramping, was Primal Amulet. It makes all your instants and sorceries cost one less to cast. And then whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, put a counter on it, and then flip it after, what is it, four? Yeah, after four, you flip it, and it turns into this bad boy right here, where you it turns into a land that adds a mana of any color. In this deck, it'll be red. And then when that spell is cast, uh, you can copy it. So I put a couple of things in here that help copy things. Uh, I was going for that whole, you know, extra spells kind of thing. Uh, I wanted to put other things in that did that solely, but I figured, why do that when I can do, you know, the Pyromancer's Goggles where it adds mana, and it does that, so I wanted multiple use out of each card. So, I put that in there, it's kind of a mana ramp, it's not, it just makes your spells cost less, but it also turns into a land that doubles all of your stuff, so, I thought that was a pretty good addition. Panharmonicon, uh, it doubles triggered abilities, so it would double... Uh, the damage that Perforos does whenever uh, a creature comes into play. It's an, almost an auto-include in this deck. Uh, again, this wasn't out when I made the deck, so of course I didn't put it in there. But of course when I opened this, it was, the first thing I thought of was, Oh, Perforos, it's got to go in there. So, uh, so yeah, I went ahead and put that in there. Helm of the Host, I told you guys I was probably going to do this anyway. Uh, it's to make extra copies of the legend that includes Krenko, that includes Perforos, you know, just to have an additional, a redundancy, if you will, to be able to have another version of that card, or specifically actually have another copy of that card. So Helm of the Host went in there. If, uh, if you can't read it, it says at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of equipped creature, except it isn't legendary. If the equipped creature is legendary and that token gains ho gain that token gains haste. Now, it does not say anything about sacrificing the thing, the token at the end of the turn, so it creates additional copies every turn. So, imagine having four Perforoses on the board and making one token with Panharmonicon out. <coughs> See where I'm going with that? So, Helm of the Host, I, I honestly believe this is a staple in almost any commander deck at this point, that the commander really matters. I can't imagine not doing it. Uh, the Immortal Sun, I saw it in my stuff, and I was like, okay, that could work. 
yes, it turns off your own planeswalkers, but it turns off everybody's planeswalkers. And some planeswalkers are just a bitch. Uh, it, so it doesn't turn off any of the, um, the War of the Spark, like, you know, static abilities, but it stops their ability to use their loyalties. So, it's in there, it's not for that purpose. The purpose of it was the additional draw, and it was to make your spells cost less and to make your creatures bigger. Uh, that's a bonus of it, you know, turning off Planeswalker loyalty abilities. Uh, it does affect you if your, you know, draw was into Planeswalkers. But other than that, it's actually a pretty damn good card. Alright, the reason Koth came out. Koth came out because of Torch of Defiance. Chandra Torch of Defiance. I did a little bit of, like, comparisons. It's same mana cost. She comes into play with an additional loyalty counter. And she has four abilities instead of three. Koth was in the deck originally because I liked his his minus two ability to add red to your mana pool equal to number of mountains. Her similar ability is a uptick instead of a downtick to add two red. In case you get her out early, you don't have a lot of mountains. Because I did add a couple of non-mountain land into the deck. Um, she also exiles the top card of your library and you may cast it. And if you don't, she deals two damage to each opponent. So she fits the theme of Perforos a little bit better than Koth did. And then she deals four damage to her creature in case you're having a problem with, you know, flying creatures or there's a, a, a creature that's really giving you a problem. And then her ultimate or her, you know, her ultimate down tick is uh, get an emblem with whenever you cast a spell. This emblem deals five damage to target creature or player. So she fits the theme of Perforos much better than Koth did. Again, <clears throat> she wasn't out when I made the deck. She's a natural fit for a Perforos deck, especially in place of Koth, especially at the same cost for better loyalty and for more abilities. So that was the change I made with the utility stuff. Now, as far as the lands go, um, and I'm going to make a change live here, I went ahead and changed out all of the regular basic mountains that were full art for snow covered full art basic mountains all of them have been changed out so they're all nice and, and new and shiny from the modern horizon set i opened enough just to get into this deck now i'm going to take one out live so just give me a second and i'll show you why all right <clears throat> so dwarven mine went in it counts as a mountain so that's a bonus Comes into play tapped unless you control three or more mountains. There are still plenty of mountains in here. It itself counts as a mountain as well. So it doesn't count for its own ability because this is commander and you only have one copy. But the fact that it is a mountain. And when it comes into play, if it comes into play on tapped, you can put a 1-1 one, one red creature token into play. Fits Perforos very well. So I added that in. I needed more defense. So I went ahead and added Blast Zone. Blast Zone is kind of like a... Uh, it's, it's a controlled disc, so to speak. So it comes into play with a charge counter on it. It adds a colorless. And then you can double X and put a charge counter on it again. So if you want more than one, you can add it. If you don't want more than one, you can just leave it. Um, you can sacrifice it to destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana cost that's equal to the number of charge counters on it. So I believe there is an Oblivion Stone. It's basically a land version of an Oblivion Stone where you can control it a little bit. So I needed more defense, Blast Zone went in place of a mountain. Field of Ruin, um, I added this in there because I needed some ways to deal with non-basic lands. And I just happened to have it. It's an upgrade and an update where it's a little shiny. So I went ahead and added that in there. Forgotten Cave, I, I put in um, a couple of lands that cycle so that when it's mid to late game like a little bit further into the game uh if you end up drawing it and you don't want to play a land or you've already played a land or there's a reason why you have you know you just need to draw a card instead anything but a land you always go anything but a land and then you draw a land your hope is you draw this one as your land if it is that case so you can cycle it away i did that with that and i also put in the smoldering crater for the same purpose they're there just to cycle away so you can go ahead and get a better draw all right, so the original deck has fetch lands in it, so we can thin the deck out of land draws. Uh, I figured, why not? Why stop at just the uh, the two that I have in there? And I probably could have went and found more, but uh, I have other decks that need them, so I didn't go with you know the more expensive fetch lands. I went with this. 
its fabled passage. It sacrificed to go search for a basic land and put it in the play tapped unless you control four or more lands. Uh, and then it untaps. So, basically, it's a fetch land for basic lands. It's not a faux fetch like I talk about in my, uh, in my uh, budget decks. This is an actual fetch, but it's a little different than the, the real fetch. It goes and gets a base land instead of, you know, a named land like mountain, island, forest, stuff like that. In a monocolor deck like this, it works perfectly. Uh, so expect to see a lot more of these. Uh, I was very happy to open this. All right, and the last thing I got is Prismatic Vista, another fetch. This is actually in the style of an actual fetch. Pay a life, sacrifice it, and go search for another basic land. Again, monocolor deck. It's perfect for this deck. And yes, if you didn't notice, I actually opened one of these in foil. So, those were the changes I made initially. And then I'm going to show you guys why I have something live that I'm going to do. So, I don't do this often. But I do have a treat in here, and i got to find it real quick. There we go. So, I went ahead, and I was looking at some of my stuff that I have set aside for later. And I went ahead, and I found something. So let me go ahead and do that. This is my this binder that I have pulled out, which I'm not showing you everything. Um, this is my special binder of stuff I put to the side for a rainy day or for when I want to play something cool. I didn't know I had it in there, but one of the la uh, I, I'd rather have full art lands, but I actually have a foil snow covered mountain. Uh, I was hoping to find more snow covered like land that was foil. I don't have a whole lot of it, but I found this, and I'm going to go ahead and make that change live. Uh, I didn't realize I had it, so. That's going to go ahead in there just because it's kind of cool looking and it's one of the older ones from Cold Snap. So that is the final upgrade or update I'm going to do to this deck for now. <laughs> as time goes on, I'll probably do it again or as I open more stuff, I'll probably have other things to add to it. So that is the final step to the before and after Perforos God of the Forge updating and upgrading. Again, if you have any questions or concerns, any, any comments that you want to make, go ahead and do so below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be doing a lot more stuff coming up. And uh, go ahead and like the video because I do a lot to, uh, to make you guys happy and I'm trying to do my best. So if you have any you know comments or anything, find me on the Facebook page that I have or put them in the comments below. Uh, any suggestions or anything, you can always contact me. So that is it. Thank you and enjoy your day.